Well, religious freedom cases have landed in the highest court in the country. The Supreme Court siding with religious leaders in at least four states. We expect that number to grow, saying that limiting who can worship and when is a violation of our basic civil liberties. And joining us now to talk more about this is Newsmax contributor Jordan Seculo. Jordan, good morning. Welcome back to the show. Good to see you, sir. Happy holidays to you. Back. Um, you know, this one, the timing of this is, is, is pretty amazing. Right around the Christmas holiday, Hanukkah just ended. Right. Uh, these are the court's first significant rulings since Amy Coney Barrett joined the panel. Uh, talk about that and, and how you see this playing out over the next several weeks. Okay, so since November, we were losing these cases at the Supreme Court because of Chief Justice John Roberts was with the liberals of the court, and, uh, and it was a 5-4 and then Justice Ginsburg passed away, so we were waiting to, to see to fill the seat, if you will, because we knew that could be significant. We just didn't know how significant it could be in the court's jurisprudence with this balance between states and COVID and also the U.S. Constitution's guaranteed rights to Americans. Well, immediately after Justice Barrett was confirmed, cases started coming up, first out of New York. And we actually got an opinion out of this one, 5-4. Guess what was the deciding vote? Justice Barrett, mm. a, a, a real legacy of President Trump here. And the opinion, it just said very clearly, uh, with all the COVID restrictions, uh, we understand that's a state's issue, but there are constitutional protections that states can't override. One of those is the free exercise and the practice of your religious faith. So they struck down first in New York, then, uh, and that was an opinion, five to four. There, the chief justice was siding still with the liberals. Then in two more opinions, which were slip opinions, they were unsigned. Uh, we got them out of New Jersey, and then uh, we got them out of uh, Colorado. And we've now seen uh, states as well, uh, like Nevada, uh, that has one at the Ninth Circuit because of Supreme Court precedent. So as you started off, we've got four states that came down from the Supreme Court, but other state circuit courts are saying, well, there's a precedent being established. In fact, in the final case out of New Jersey, uh, so, uh, just, uh, Chief Justice Roberts actually side, did, did not side with the liberals. He's a big precedent guy. So if three cases have already come before yeah. and said, wait, you can't do this, he actually might be moving back over with the conservatives. So my advice is that if you are a place of worship, the Supreme Court won't do this for you. They won't issue some nationwide order. Right. You need to contact you know, groups like us at ACLJ.org. We have an ACLJ.org slash uh, help. We'll do it to, for you for free. But you've got to bring your case to the court. Do you exactly because they don't know about it unless you unless you bring your case to the court. Right. But do you see the court ruling on this at some point? Like I know I know coronavirus has shifted things, but this is I mean this is the First Amendment. It's not the Eighth Amendment. It's not the it's Amendment Number One. Um, right. Do you see them eventually mandating that people can worship? Uh, we had to make a reservation. We're going to mass on Thursday for Christmas sure. Eve. I had to make a reservation with my family. Some people couldn't get right. in. Yeah, and now that's up to the churches. Uh, now, with this order, the, the court has basically said we're going to leave it up to the religious place of worship. Uh, and my church is doing the same thing. And I'm in a state that's a, a bit more open than New York, to say the least. Right. But it's still my church has chosen to have more limited services uh, because uh, we perform communion. Uh, other churches uh, in, the, in uh, different parts of the process have uh, you know, done very little separation, but maybe had mass requirements. That's up to the private church. The, the courts will never step in and tell the church you have to open and that you must do it this way. But, it, but again, that, that would be up to the church at this point, if right. you're in, depending on what state you're in. And if your church doesn't want to operate that way, follow what the Archdiocese of D.C. has done. He's filed a lawsuit against the mayor. That could ultimately make its way to the Supreme Court. But it's possible the D.C. Circuit Court of Appeals uh, or even the, the D.C., uh, the, the trial court there, the district court, could say, you know what, we've got Supreme Court precedent now. Uh, four cases, very clear that you cannot trample on the First Amendment rights when it comes to the free exercise clause of religion. And I'll tell you, Rob, the free exercise clause, until Justice Barrett got there, we had about four justices who actually thought that that had any weight in it. Chief Justice Roberts was not really one of those. Uh, so when we argued these religious liberty cases, which we do often for the last three decades, uh, we would we would argue that point, but have to argue all these other points for free speech and things like that. Yeah. We're starting to see new life, new life, uh, new breath, if you will, 
into the free exercise clause of the First Amendment. You can thank President Trump for that. Yeah, and you can thank, you know, President Trump, part of his legacy will be those three Supreme Court justices, uh, Amy Coney Barrett being uh, the, the, the most recent appointee. You know, Senator Ted Cruz wrote a book. It's um, uh, One Vote away or, or uh, yeah, one vote away. It's a book about the Supreme Court and packing the court and AOC would love to do this to give, uh, you know, a liberal bent to that court for the next three generations. Um, and that's something that's going to become a conversation after January 20th. So how important do you think it is that President Trump was able to get Justice uh, Barrett appointed uh, before the election? I think it was so key. One, it energized the base, regardless of how this election ultimately turns out. We saw it in the House races. We're seeing it now in in Georgia on January 5th. We're going to the, the out the who will control the Senate. I mean, it's really a national race because it determines the outcome of control of the U.S. Senate with uh, Loeffler and Purdue. And uh, that is very key to what, what you're talking about is putting a, a stop to they can talk all they want about packing the court, but if the Senate remains in Republican hands, it won't happen. And we know it won't happen. Yeah. So that's the best way to stop the court packing is to get those two senators in Georgia elected so that they can prevent these radical moves that we're seeing from people like AOC. And, and listen, we we saw Joe Biden said he's going to put together a commission on it. So he's not backing away fully from it. Right. He's not saying yes, but he's saying, I want to put together some commission and let people decide, it kind of give me advice. So he wanted to have it both ways for himself uh, during the election, but he didn't flat out say, I'm, it. I'm never going to do no, this. No, he has not they taken don't his foot the off the gas. Back, You're right. But, I mean, they could have the votes in two years. Yeah. Mitch McConnell could be the most important Republican in uh, in elected politics uh, after January 20th. And, and that special election, by the way, January 5th, so right around the corner for all of our Absolutely. viewers in the, uh, in the Peach State. Jordan Seculo, thank you so much for your time. We appreciate it, sir. Happy holidays to you. Thank you. Thank you, Rob. Happy holidays. All right. Well